A wedding is the most exciting, if not the most anticipated event of your life. Every bride and groom dreams to put the smallest detail perfectly. Dito sa Wedding TV, tutulungan namin kayo na paghandaan ng iyong kasal mula sa umpisa hanggang sa pinakamaliit na detalye. I'm Hard of Anglista and this is your wedding magazine show on TV, Wedding TV. Libiran ang isa sa mga kilalang designers these days. Pero pagdating sa wedding gowns, it's his collaboration with the bride that makes it a hit. I started fashion designing 15 years ago. I'm a graduate of architecture and then decided to be a fashion designer. Around three years after I started being a fashion designer, one client went to me and asked, Francis, do you make wedding gowns? I said, I can. I can design something for you. So from that time on, I continued my yung, yung design ko for, for wedding gowns. The most important thing in designing a wedding gown is always talking to the client get to know them before I design anything for that particular bride. So it's very important that the rapport between me and the client, I need to know the personality of the bride. From there on, I, I try to get the inspiration and that's where I start drawing the wedding gown. First step is really meeting with them, and that's where we try to talk to each other. Ako, I get my inspiration from the one I'm talking to because for me, it's not just my design. I need to know the personality of the one who's wearing it. Creativity will come along. Weddings right now is very interesting because it's very personalized. There's a lot of fashion designers here in the Philippines, but one thing that will differ from one another is the service. It's very important, the personal touch to it. With regards with the trend, right now it's getting to be more and more exciting because a lot of details is going on with the wedding gown. So we really try to make it a point that we have a signature look in our designs. I always gain my inspiration from patterns. I love doing patterns. I, I create my own patterns inspired from architecture, from, from different patterns of different cultures. And I guess that's where my signature look is. It's more of an architectural yet, you know, romantic combined together. Every bride has so many insecurities. Cover this, make me thin, I want to look slim, I want to look tall. It's just working on their insecurities. You tend to design after you talk to that particular bride and that's where all my creative juices comes out. Know your body type, know your style, and know what you really like. It's very important that you have your own personal style than copying it from the magazine or from other brides. It's really important to know who you are as a bride. You need to visualize yourself down the aisle. I have a team who does the pricings. Most memorable, of course, one is Marca Reyes. We started out very simple. She wants it very plain, no embellishments at all. And then at the middle of the preparation, she called me up and said, Francis, can we make it opposite? I really want it grand. I really want it embellished. I want the big stones around my, my body. So it's her inspiration and I need to work around it. The first wedding gown I did, I was having a hard time to detach from it because while walking down the aisle, you were teary-eyed also. That should work came to life walking down the aisle and you see the bride appreciating it and the people around it appreciating it. So that, that thing is very memorable for me. 
always be inspired on what you do, love what you're doing, and have your signature look. You know, there's an endless possibilities of designs. There's no limit to it as long as you work hard for it. Next week, samahin niyo kami alamin pa na gumawa ng wedding's invitation ng The Right Impression. Also, silipin din natin ang Blue Leaf Pavilion, among other options for your venues. And also, get to know the secret of a good makeup artist with Madge Lejano. And get to know Bob Nicholas, another great genius when it comes to wedding cinematography. All these and more here on your wedding magazine show on TV, Weddings TV. Philippine Ambassador Jason Magbanua isn't just an icon, but a legend when it comes to wedding videography. He has done a lot of firsts in the wedding filmmaking scene and continues to make waves. My name is Jason Magbanua. I am a wedding videographer, but I also run my own company. Jason Magbano Wedding Films. We make wedding videos. That's the core of what we do. But we do a little bit of uh, other corporate stuff, you know, uh, non-wedding work on the side. I've been doing this for 13 years already, and uh, this is my second career. I used to be a teacher first. I shifted, and there was no looking back since then. Being a wedding videographer in the country, it's been just a wild, wild, fun ride. I can't say that it's always been a bed of roses. Mahirap magpatagbo ng kompanya. Mahirap maging wedding videographer pag ang daming na magaling na wedding videographer. Mahirap din kapag you try to face different kinds of clientele. But at the end of it all, I can't see myself doing anything else. I really am, you know, I'm passionate about what I do. Across the years kasi, parang merong lumilitaw na defined style, defined method of uh, how we approach things. No? I think I could really say it's really a journalistic kind of uh, filmmaking. From the outset, I really believe that ang isang kasal, there's just so much happening already. And for me to step into that and direct things, that's going to be too much already. And that's already tampering the experience. That already goes against my philosophy of Ang ganda na ng wedding, you shoot, you have to be where you have to be at a certain point in time, okay? And just roll the camera and beautiful things will happen. That is my philosophy and that is the training that my videographers have. Eh. Ayoko nung nag invento Ayoko nung kunwari nangyari. Ayoko nung, oh, ito gawin natin to. We place ourselves in the best place possible in the precise moment and then just roll the camera. That's the training. Actually, yung pagiging non-obtrusive, unobtrusive, naging ano yun, catchphrase na lang yan, naging marketing gimmick na parang, oh, we will just capture the moment, etc. But from the very start, I have been using that word and we have stayed true. The core service, of course, is the wedding coverage, right? And uh, part of the wedding coverage is a full-length film submitted after a few months, and then the same day edit, which is, I feel right now, is really the core of our product. We call this self-indulgent, pero yung palakpak, yung response, after they screen it, parang, wow, that's, that's, a, that's what I love. There are other services to what we do, including uh, pre-wedding shoots, love stories, interviews, out-of-town shoots, and all of this is like, you know, depending on the couple, what they want. As somebody who does this, and I'm a lifer, you know, 13 years na yan, no? Dapat, ang philosophy ko, uh, every six months, meron kang favorite na bago. That means that you're evolving. That means you are improving. Na after six months, meron ko ng bagong favorite na parati mong pinapanood, na parati mong binabalikan. Ganun yung philosophy. That said, meron ka lang mga tinatawag na greatest hits, right? Yung mga best of talaga. Eh. One of them uh, that comes to mind is uh, Mara and Elo's Wedding. Ang dami kong tanong sa Diyos, Bakit ganun? Alam ko na ikaw ang sagot sa lahat ng tanong ko. 
sa lahat ng dasal ko, sobra-sobra pa. This really went viral, especially with the social networking sites. It's a great love story to tell. And that's what I'm all about. Telling the story in a journalistic fashion. Elo is a little person. And it just got so cut deeply into the psyche of Filipinos. That's why I said viral. Like, you know, thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of likes and hits in Facebook. They just like professed publicly that, hey, you know, we're no different from other people. And we are in love and we are uh, gonna get married. Being a wedding videographer has brought me to different places, beautiful places. And I guess that's one of the things that uh, I really like about what I do. More than that, I guess, is to be able to meet a lot of people who are madly, deeply, crazy in love with each other. No? I think that's really one of the things. No? It's, it's kind of cliche, but you meet with people and then they're just like, it's like positive vibes. You know, just flowing, the energy, it's like they're just excited and you share their enthusiasm. Ang saya nun. Tingin ko, nakabata yun. People book us because, because of the experience, because of the creativity, and because of the service that we render to the couples that we have. Sometimes it boils down to service. It boils down to how I relate to my clients that we're just genuinely pleasant and polite people to work with because you know I don't want to stress you on your wedding day I am going to be the least of your concerns and we are going to turn out a beautiful product just for you on the wedding day This portion is brought to you by Canon delighting you always Manfrotto imagine more Bizu started out as a dream, and now it's one of the most sought-after wedding caterers. What is the secret behind Bizu's success? Let's find out. Bizu was started about 12 years ago by Andy Tanko, a good friend of mine, who has always been a passionate cook and traveler. So one day she came up to me and related to me this story of this dream that she had, wherein she was in a restaurant filled with people who were making beso beso to each other. She was asking me if Bizu would be a good name for a restaurant that she wanted to put up, and I said yes. She gathered a team of chefs and started developing the product. We started our first branch at Glorietta. Now we have six branches all over the metro and a thriving uh, catering business. Bizu pioneered macaron de Paris in the Philippines. These are the French almond-based pastries that Paris is uh, known for, and we brought it here to the Philippines. For the food, we are known for our tena roast beef, which is very succulent and juicy. We also have a whole lamb carcass on a spit, which we marinate for about three days and we do serve this in gatherings and events. People would get us for our cakes and then eventually people would approach us for catering events. And we started slowly until we became quite popular in the wedding industry. We have a lot of wedding packages and catering packages, but most of our clients come to us for customized menus. So basically, customer is uh, king and we try to please them as much as possible. From the food, which has to be very delicious and presented well, to the service, which has to be efficient, quiet and gracious, and the setup that is according to what our customers want. If they have a theme that they want to go with, then we try to customize the menu to fit the theme. So for instance, in the coming months, we'll be having this party that is of the Gatsby theme. Why should a couple book with us? First, we welcome them in our Bizu Catering Studio as kings and queens, you know. We treat them like royalty. When they come here, they know that the experience that they had in the studio will be the same, if not better, experience that they will have in their wedding. Well, we always say here at Bizu, dreams do come true no matter what the cost. So we do try to work with our clients' budgets and make their dream 
event come true. Weddings TV would like to thank Canon, delighting you always. Manfrotto, imagine more. My Diamond, Solar Resort and Casino. VSNF, Wendy's, DPI Housing Loan, PPI Auto Loan. How to make your own giveaways and table numbers for your wedding para mas makitipid? Wedding Essential Editor-in-Chief Kitten Zapata will tell us how. Good morning, this is Kitten Zapata of Wedding Essentials Magazine and today we'll learn how to personalize your wedding reception table. Today with me, let's welcome Justin Bumanlag of Sasso Events. Hi, Hi. Kitten. Hi. So what will we learn today? We'll uh, teach you how to do different table setups, uh, table numbers or table names or places. Here, for example, is a frame of the couple's photo where they went to Palawan. So what you can do is just put the couple's photo on the frame and then you can write their, the venue of where they went. Like for example, they went to Palawan. So there, it's that easy. Best is to do this with your friends, your entourage. Another example is to frame the treasured items of the couple. Like for this one, what's this, Justin? This is a doily from Grandma, and then we can also use an old pair of jeans, which we can cut out. Like for example, this one, we'll cut it out into a number, and then we'll just put it here inside the frame. Actually, it's very easy. You just have to collect, you know, items that are very significant for the couple. So that's one way, again, to personalize it. And then another is to play with different fonts that the couples would do, like to use. E. And numbers. Here. A. Or numbers. Or you can also cut out different fabrics and just put it... Put like, it inside the frame. Yeah. For our next DIY project, Justin will teach us how to dress up your votive candles. So we have here different bags, paper bags. We have polka dot, chevron print, printed bags or stripes. And then we can make it into something like this. So we'll just um, open up the bag and then slightly fold it. fold it like this. If you want it to be sturdy enough, we'll fold it inside. so it won't get blown easily. So then we'll put this one in. The plain votive, and then the tea light. So there. Yeah. You can also add ribbons or other decor with the, yeah, like the heart. So just stick it there and then add, the, what do you call that, Just Baker's twine. The baker's twine. You can just ribbon it like this. Very simple. Yeah. Actually, this is fun when you do it with your family. It's really a bonding time before the wedding. So there. Okay, for the next, Justin will teach us how to make our own DIY centerpiece. What materials do we need? So we need a pail, this one, and beads. Assorted beads. We'll just remove the handle and jazz it a bit with colored beads. And you can put flowers inside. It's either fresh or plastic ones or whatever's available. And then you can hang it on the pews for the church or as a um, table centerpiece for the reception. You can have the handles changed 
to whatever color is appropriate for your theme and for the flowers as well. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Kevin. And to our televiewers, catch us again next time as Wedding Essentials Magazine give you tips on your wedding day here on Weddings TV. And that was it for today. I hope to see you again next episode featuring the smallest to the biggest details you may need on your wedding day. And perhaps I could learn a thing or two. I'm Hard Evangelista and this is Weddings TV.